It is rather epic. It does have epic intros. It's very, uh, very Lord of the Rings esque. Mixed with the Matrix. Hello, Kathy. Kathy Walker has joined us. There we go. We are on. Anyway, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Walking with God. I am Kyle Walker. I am joined this week by our good guest, Joe. Uh, you are tuning in on WITV7 coming out of Kansas City on this fine evening here on this February 20th, 2018. Uh, thank you all very much for joining us tonight. Again, we've already got four people in, so we're off to nice. a very good start. Hi, Jen. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. And we have one person. If they join us, Joe has to stop everything and say hello. So Very much. Yes, just, just bringing that up. Uh, we are, I'm sure you saw the Facebook event, we are going to try and tackle a very difficult subject today. Uh, we are not afraid on this show to talk about what's going on, you know, in, in the world. And of course, as everybody knows, or I assume everyone knows, last week on Valentine's Day, which was six days ago, uh, there was another horrible shooting, a terrible tragedy here in the United States that took place at the, just so I get it right, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. So as we do, it's just a little bit north of Miami. Miami is as close as we can get. So got the hats on in support tonight for everything that's going on down there. So we on this show, we're not going to, we're not going to mention the shooter. He doesn't get airtime here, but 17 people lost their lives down there. Three faculty members and 14 students in a very tragic event. And so Really, what I wanted to start with, I, I just wanted to honor these people, um, and I've, I've got their names, their names right here. So I'm just going to run through it real quick. Uh, there was an Alyssa, Scott, Martin, Nicholas, Aaron, Jamie, Chris, Luke, Kara, Gina, uh, let's see, Joaquin, Elena, Meadow, Helena, Alex, Carmen, and Peter. So to them, you know, God bless you, and I know you guys are in a, a much better place at this time. So you know the initial the initial shock always always comes upon us when things like this happen, but as we've talked about before from last time, unfortunately with the Las Vegas shooting just in the fall, the stories of heroism normally follow fast after, and there was no shortage of that in this situation. The three I wanted to point out, the one that got the most press, of course, was Aaron Feiss, who uh, was the security guard and the assistant football coach, who used himself as a human shield. To, uh, to block bullets from students and saved, there's probably no way to know how many lives he saved, but he sacrificed himself for that. Another one was a Scott, I think it's Beigel, uh, who was a teacher there who just ran around with his keys unlocking doors so students could get into classrooms and hide. And then there's one there was, um, oh, where'd he go, I lost his name, Peter Wang, who was the NJROTC student who was a uh, holding doors and getting students out of the buildings and again this was a, this one a teacher this was a student who had the wherewithal to do what was right in the face of this um, catastrophic event so to those three and I'm sure to countless others who were involved you know, thank you so much for your sacrifice Very much. Uh, what I hate about these tragedies is it takes about two seconds it, uh, I'm, I'm gonna preface this by saying this is the point where I get to get on my soapbox takes about two seconds before our politicians and people of the like start using these events to their benefit and I, I absolutely you know, I hate it when they start on their platforms so I'm just I'm gonna give you my opinion on the issue and I, I wrote it down just so I can get through it um, when our officials start popping off of course and the fighting starting among all of us you know on social media we start to attack each other in these moments and I've talked about this before now, whether you want to call this a gun control issue or a mental health issue, you're right on all fronts, and both need to be addressed, and both need to be addressed immediately, if not sooner. But then, of course, we start firing off at each other over social media, because apparently anymore we can't have conversations 
without there being arguments and disagreements. You can absolutely disagree with what I say on this show, and you can absolutely disagree with what Joe says on this show, but we're only going to do disagreements if we can do it respectfully. And that's one of the things seriously lacking in our country at this very moment is the simple respect that we need to be having for each other, especially in tragic times such as these. So yes, there are conversations that need to be had about gun control laws. Yes, there are conversations that need to be had about mental health issues, and those are the things that you see the most. And I believe that it, you know, it's, it is my Second Amendment right to bear arms, okay? And, and I do. I, I absolutely exercise that right. But I also think, on the flip side of that, it is too easy for people to get these assault rifles that are being used in these terrible events. Gun control laws need to be stricter, and I am a gun owner saying that they need to be changed. So, really, I'm probably taking off all sides at this point, but that's exactly what I am. And, you know, the people with the higher pay grades of mine, they can figure this out. Uh, the, the part of my opinion, let's see. Uh, so, what, what we're going to do here tonight is I'm going to kind of handle the people side of things, and then we're going to go to Joe for the spiritual side. So, I am trying to rush through my part so that we can get to Joe as this is walking with God. But again, we talk about these things on this program. And clearly, I'm still upset about the events that happened six days ago. And so we're going to talk about it. And what I think, and this is my opinion, not based on any fact, this is my opinion. Based on what I've seen in my time on this planet, I am willing to bet that our shooter down in Florida, in his life, the highest power or the highest authority over him was himself. And this is why I say that. All right, from Columbine, which was in the 90s to now, what is the two things that you see the most in our schools today? That is doing away with prayer in school, and that is doing away with the Pledge of Allegiance. So already you are taking away two higher powers than the students themselves and saying that they don't belong in here. And then let's even go down from that. What do you have next? You have teachers. Ask any teacher how much authority they actually have anymore in their classrooms. Their authority has been stripped away. I was in a, at an event last week where a teacher of 26 years said this is his last year of teaching, that they have made it just too difficult for him to teach anymore, and he is retiring, and he's going to go off and sell real estate. That is because his power has been taken away, and because we don't have prayers in school, and we don't have a Pledge of Allegiance, and we don't have teachers who can actually use authority in their classroom, these students have no higher powers than themselves. And when you have that, you are setting them up for failure. These are kids. You don't leave your kids in charge. You don't have the inmates running the asylum, if you will. And I'm sure most teachers would agree with that statement. It is basically like inmates running the asylum. Uh, let's see here. Um, you know, anymore, and again, this is just my social opinion, kids are all told that they're special. Whether you go to the participation trophy aspect of it or any other aspect, when you as a parent are screaming at a teacher because little Johnny didn't turn his assignment in for six weeks, or you're screaming at the teacher because little Susie hasn't been to class in a month, you are telling these kids that they are just above all authority figures and that they are, quote unquote, special. Uh, what you really need to do, and again, in my opinion, disagree with me if you like, but you need to stop being your children's friend. It is time that we get back to actually being a parent. Okay, I have to parent my kids. Ask my daughters how many times I have to say no in a standard day to, with them. It's a lot. They hear that word a lot because I am their parent. I am not their friend. I am not their buddy. I'm not, hey, buddy, dad. No, I am their father. And I am responsible for the way that they turn out. And I take personal responsibility for how that's going to happen. And a lot of these parents need to do the same thing as well. Again, I'm not bashing on any parents right now. This is simply what I think about it. So like I said, stop being your kid's friend. Uh, you know, my daughter's they pray before every meal. We sit at the table for every meal and we say our prayer. We bless the food. So already they've got that higher power. When, when we're sitting here watching a baseball game and they do the national anthem, my girls stand up and put their hands over their hearts. All right, that's just teaching them to respect things higher than themselves. And then my last one, uh, my, my, my youngest daughter, my eight-year-old, is an exceptionally gifted soccer player right now. She is one of the best in the state of Kansas. She's eight years old. She comes from the genes of her mother and me. I really don't expect that she's going to be playing in the Olympics. Maybe she'll surprise me someday. But I am also not going to sacrifice everything because she is special at soccer at eight years old. 
All right, if she is ever at a point where her grades suffer, soccer is the first thing to go. There is no playing soccer if your grades are suffering. That is just how I choose to parent, and I know that my ex-wife, her mother, is actually in agreement with me on these things. Kids need to understand that there are things higher than themselves. It is their parents, it is their teachers, it is their country, and it is their God. And if we can't teach these things, we're going to see more of this happening. So now I am going to do a full 180 dismount from my soapbox, and we're going to send this over here to Joe. Joe, that is what I think parents need to do, and what we as people need to do. But I know that you have focused on what does the church need to do, and maybe even that's bigger than we as people. So please, after my rant, take take it away. <laughs> Kyle, I don't necessarily think it's bigger than 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 we as people, um, because I think before we have the conversation of what is the church's response, mm -hmm. I think it's very important for us to define who the church really is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a the church. The church is not a place I go on Sunday. That's a building. Yeah. The church is not a place where I work. I work in an, I work in an office. Mm -hmm. Um. The church is the church is the body of Christ, and and Scripture is very clear on this. And I think that before we move forward as to as to what our role is in this and what our responsibilities are, mm -hmm. and what we, in my opinion, will be held accountable for one day. Yes. We need to define who the church is, and it starts in Ephesians one, and Ephesians one twenty two says he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. And if you you tie that together with 1 Corinthians 12, 27, where it says, Now we are Christ's body and individually members of it. So the church is not First Baptist Church of somewhere. Right. The church is not the Catholic Church of somewhere. Church is the people who make up the body of Christ. So anyone who calls themselves a Christ follower is a representation of the church. Yes. So with that all being said, I, I truthfully believe that in times of crisis, and I'm not going to make any political statements. No, I took care of that. Kyle he doesn't took, have Kyle to. Kyle took care of that. And, and I, that's not where I go anyway. <laughs> Anybody who knows me, that's not, that's not my area. Um, but what I am going to say is, is I think that before we move on with this, it's. I don't know if this show makes its way to Florida. I don't know if it makes its way to people who have been um, personally affected by this. I do know it makes its way to people who have been emotionally affected by this. Yes. And so what I want to say is I'm incredibly sorry. I'm incredibly sorry that you're having, that maybe you had to endure this. Mm -hmm. I'm incredibly sorry that you're having to feel these these emotions. I'm incredibly sorry that this has potentially altered your, your your life. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that our children are having to deal with these things in their schools. I'm I'm sorry that we're having to deal with these things in our communities. I'm sorry. And I know I'm sorry doesn't go a long way, but because we're not sitting in the same room, that's what I've got is I'm sorry. And I think that, I think though, that what I want to be able to do is provide the next three things in my next little bit of talking and say, this is what I believe as the body of Christ we will be held accountable to, accountable for, when everything is all said and done when it comes to these responses to crisis. And I think it comes to three things. I think it comes to protection, yep. provision, yep. and guidance. Protection's an interesting thing because there's a lot of protection that could happen. But protection, protection, there's a couple different ways to look at it. And the first is sometimes we have to protect our protect others from others. Yes. And could that be legislation? Sure. That could be those sort of things. But could it be physical protection? Yes, there are times when people will bring things to us and we have to stand up and say, this ends here. We have these phenomenal groups where um, 
we have these phenomenal groups at our church that uh, they're fireside groups and one of the rules is what happens here will what's said here will stay here except if what you tell us is a danger to yourself or to others, to others right we have to protect there comes a point in time when as the body of Christ we have to step in yes and potentially physically protect we also have to be an emotional protection at times and you know um, when these things happen when major tragedies happen we can feel emotions that we more strongly than at other times and I don't know about you but I tend to react poorly when my emotions are at a high level I tend to react not logically right I, I tend to react not even rationally but emotionally and when we respond that way it, it can do more harm than good so when we hit these emotions and if Kyle is struggling with this one of the things I'm gonna provide I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to protect him against the emotions that are coming from others yep. and himself you know, um, sometimes we can get caught up in the emotions of others. And if I were to sit and and Kyle and I were sitting in a room and, and I was to able to see that this guy's emotions were beginning to rile Kyle up and that's not a good thing, then I'm going to come and gracefully put my arm around my buddy and say, let's go get some hot wings. You know, and, and I know Kyle well enough to know that that's going to get him out of the room. Um, that's true. That's true. But the other bit of this also, guys, is that we may have to spiritually protect folks. Because our gut response, a lot of people's gut response in a situation like this is, so you believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Where was God in the middle of this? Which I think is probably the biggest question you're going to find in situations like this. Yeah. Which is a huge question. And, and it's an honest question. It is. But in that time, we have to be able to protect the protect ourselves and protect others from those spiritual attacks because they can come and it comes to reminding folks that yes scripture says in your life you will have troubles because we're all fallen yes and my mistakes can cause trouble in Kyle's life and Kyle's mistakes can cause trouble in mine and in yours and in the lives around us we hope it doesn't but it can but it can and in these lives, we can have troubles, whether they be big or small. But the important thing during that time is to, is to protect by walking people back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we protect from others. But here's the thing. We also protect from ourselves. <sighs> Grief can kill a person emotionally and physically. Yes if not countered with God's strength and power our personal weakness may debilitate us it's been a thought I've been wrestling with all day today <laughs> yeah. and and it's hit me because I watch I watch people who get grief stricken in these moments and grief is a natural response but especially young folks yes we just had a tragedy at, at one of our local high schools Shawnee Mission Northwest had three ch had three children take their own lives yeah. this is a this is a serious thing and I, I grief can drive you to something that you wouldn't normally dream of doing and it's our responsibility to protect others from themselves and from others. Philippians 2, 4 says, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. Psalms 82 says, Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. And in this situation, what is more needy than a child? Than a child. And so these things, this protection can take place. For some of us, it does come back to we're, we're, we're working for national changes mm -hmm. to protect our families and the people who matter the most to us. 
For others, it really is. The people that matter the most to you need the most protection, and they need it one-on-one -on -one right now. Yes. The second thing we can provide is provision. Galatians 6 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I believe firmly that the church, us, yes, all of us, we can provide three things in the time of crisis. We can provide strength, we can provide comfort, and we can provide peace. We can provide strength when others feel weak. Mm -hmm. I've been the beneficiary of other people's strength when I did not have it myself. When I was not strong enough to move forward on my own. But here's the thing. Why can we do this? Why can the body of Christ do this? Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now listen to me. I am not even remotely saying that God finds joy in the crises that happen, in the massive things that we find ourselves drawn into. I am not saying that he weeps with those who weep. And he celebrates with those who celebrate. But he finds joy in the way we care for others. And he will give us the strength so we can be strong. We can provide comfort. Mm -hmm. Again, been the beneficiary. <laughs> We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But I've been that guy who needed that more than, than I could imagine. And, and 2 Corinthians 1 says, The God of all comfort comforts me. So I, it's a revised Joe version. The <laughs> God of all comfort comforts me so I can provide comfort to others. Truthfully, without that, I have no comfort to give. Right. But in the midst of my hurt, the God of all comfort, who is my strength, is also my comforter. So that I can provide strength and comfort for others. And the last bit of this, we can provide peace. And this does kind of go back to the things you were talking about, about how we deal with each other socially, and especially, not even necessarily socially, on social media. I have Okay, sorry. It's my, my one little second of soapbox. There you go. Have at it. We tend to, most people, I don't want to say everybody, I don't even say most people, a lot of people tend to not wage peace in these situations. You are correct, They sir. tend to fan the flame that is disintegrating mm -hmm. the unity of not only within our nation, but in the walls of our church, oh, within yeah. the body of our church. It could be within the walls of your home. It could be within the walls of our home. Mm -hmm. You know? So our responsibility is to wage peace in the life of others. And how do we do that? Look at me real quick. <laughs> we do that by hitting our knees. We do that by going before the God of all strength and the God of all comfort and the God of all peace and saying, Father, I do not know what to do, but I know that you call yourself the Prince of Peace and I am begging you to provide peace in this person's life because they need it now more than ever. Oftentimes, we will say things like, our prayers are going out. I say this, and Kyle's talked about this before on a previous show. I say this because the ultimate source of strength and comfort is not found within me. It's found within the one who I call my king. And if I don't run to him... There is no peace. I can't wage peace because I will be out of sync myself. It is not a weak thing to do. It is the most powerful thing that any Christ follower can do is run back to Jesus. 
Okay, I'm done with my little soapbox there. Well, and let me let me add on your soapbox here. Uh, if you remember from our previous shows, the whole the whole issue about thoughts and prayers, and how there is actually a war against our thoughts and prayers. I saw I saw on social media, oddly enough, it said thoughts and prayers, and then they marked it out, and underneath it, it said actions. Let's think about this for just a moment, if we can. So what you want are actions without any thought and without any prayer. What in the world kind of actions do you think you're going to come up with? If you have not given it a thought, if you have not prayed about it, if you're a Christ follower, you can't really go that route. Let's be honest. I love actions. Actions are great. I take actions every day. Most of them are wrong. Most of the time, though, I at least give it a moment's thought, and if I'm feeling really crazy, I'll actually pray about something. But anyone who just wants those actions without the thought and without the prayer, let's really think that through. Your order of operations are wrong. They're flat wrong. We pray, we think, Jesus gives us the action, and then we obey. Now I will dismount again. My <laughs> second trip to the soapbox. So, Kyle, I think the third thing, and you talk about actions. Yes. And I think this is where the action step comes in. Mm -hmm. The third thing that we can provide, I said we can provide protection, and we can provide provision. The third thing we can provide is guidance. Yes. And that's not guidance as far as advice. No. Because no. I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. And, and two guys sitting here in Kansas aren't going to solve school shootings in a, no. in a 30 odd minute show. No. That's not, I wish I could. If, if we could, it would have been over with a long time ago. Yeah. I can't fix my own problems, let alone somebody else's. Correct. Um, but I can guide people to the one who can. Yep. 23rd Psalm says, um, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. And let's reiterate, through the through. valley. We're not going over. We're not going around. We're not going around. We didn't dig a tunnel underneath it. We have to walk through these things. But I don't have the strength or the comfort or the peace to be your guide through that completely. Will I walk with you? Yes. Uh, to the fullest extent that I can, mm -hmm. I will walk with you. But my job is to guide you back to the good shepherd who is Jesus. And I said I wanted to provide these three things for you guys today. This is where I want to do this. If the tragedy of last week is, is weighing on you, truthfully it probably should be a little bit. It is. If the tragedy of last week is weighing on you, it's time to run to Jesus. Because he will protect you. He will protect you against yourself. He will, he, he will be the God of, of peace that you need so that grief doesn't overtake. He will protect you from others, potentially physically, by putting the right people around you to protect you from them. Yep. Or taking those people out of your life. Yep. He will protect you emotionally. When the emotions of others start to rise, he'll give you a way out the door. He'll protect you spiritually because well, that's what he does. <laughs> it's kind of his thing. But he'll provide strength and comfort and peace. Mm -hmm. And he'll provide guidance and guidance that you can trust, guidance that you can lean into, guidance that will never fail. So that as you walk through that valley, you can walk out knowing that on the other side, that passage goes, and he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Yep. Because we serve a Jesus that is now and has always been the good shepherd. The church's job protection, provision, and guidance are the jobs of an under-shepherd in the kingdom of God. Our job is to, is to protect when we can, provide when we can, and when it gets too big, you walk them back to the good shepherd because one, he knows their name, but do you know why he's called the good shepherd? 
in my, my humble opinion, because he smells like his sheep. He smells like his sheep because he stood with them in their mess. Because he's hugged them when they were crying. Because he's had compassion on them when they were hurting. Because he's walked with them through the most difficult seasons of life. And he's walked out the other side with them. Holding them when he needed to. Guiding them when he needed to. Protecting them when he needed to. And consistently providing for them. So Kyle, I I think it's important to be able to talk a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I know that we're moving up over, we've moved over half an hour. And, and I just have one question. And I, I think that it's important because... I can say all of these things and say these are the things that the church can provide when the church is at its best. Sure. But I think it's important for us to both, because we've walked through crises that are different. Yes, very different. But they were, they were, we we understand the emotion that comes with a crisis. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't risk. We wouldn't wish our crisis on anyone in this world. Oh, neither no. of us would. No, definitely not. But we've both received, at some point in time, a level of protection, provision, and guidance mm-hmm. from the church. Yes. Not a specific church, but the, the church. church. Yes. At some level, so I think it's important that we take a moment and say, "What did?" Just a couple of minutes. What did this look like for us? Sure. Um, and I know I've just kind of dropped this on you, so yeah, you're good. So I'll I'll hop in first, and then I'll let you finish, and then you can wrap up our show. Sure. Fire, so fire away. You know, I shared here at one point in time, and that my family went through a very difficult season yes. a while back. We invited a young man into our home, and he he's someone that we loved, and in the process of this him being in our home, this this someone that we love attempted to hurt someone else that we loved Mm -hmm. in a very in a very bad way. Right. And I was a wreck. You know? Mm -hmm. I I was a wreck for a while. I couldn't get my mind back around things. Um by the grace of God I didn't act foolishly in that moment. Yes. Um because I could have. And I, I think a lot of people would have looked at the situation and called me justified. Um, but during that time, I had three very good friends and who spoke into my life in different ways. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had a dear friend named Jimmy um, who showed up at my home and said, Hey, Joe, we're going to your front yard. I got a cigar, and what just happened in your home is off limits. That's right. We're going to talk about who Jesus is. And he provided a place for me Mm -hmm. where I could start to regain an iota of normalcy. Because if you know me and you've had any conversations with me for any length of time, I talk about Jesus. Um, A little bit. A little bit. Just a hair. A little bit. I have another dear friend, and his name was, and his name is Ray, mm-hmm. and and Ray came, and he kept telling me, he kept asking the question, Joe, what are you hearing from other people who know what's going on? And every time I would say, well, this person says I should be angry about this, and this person should said I should do this, and and he would stop me, and he go, don't get caught in this. Mm-hmm. And the other people meant well; they did not. It was not ever ill. They meant well. But my friend Ray stopped me from becoming overly emotional in an unhelpful way. And then my dear friend Bree, during that time, and I, I, I've written down, but I, I got text message after text message and scripture after scripture just reminding me that Jesus was the reason that I can walk through this. Mm-hmm. She was... She was the, the catalyst to point me back to the Jesus that I love. 
but the Jesus that who loved me more than I could ever imagine. And it was the church who came around me and who met me in those moments and reminded me how good and how faithful and how merciful and how gentle Jesus is and how the church how how all those things the church can be when they follow his lead. Mm -hmm. And I and I know that you know, like I said, our situations were different, but I also know that you you got to experience some of these things. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, again, this being our show normally for the uh, divorced and or single person, you know, that's where my, my experience, of course, revolves. And I, I know I've shared the story in several different forms a, a couple times, but in, you know, I, when I got divorced, I couldn't have been farther from the church. I was not part of the church body. I was not part of the body of Christ. I had no church home I just I was not not that I wasn't a believer I mean I had my my Sunday school days as a kid but I was not a practicing uh, Christ follower in any sense of the words right and so two years after my divorce after I put myself through many personal trials after shall, you tried to do this on your own yeah uh, shall we say that is when the 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 church the body of Christ, whatever you want to call them, it's where two members of it went into protection mode, protecting me. And that's when the two folks who are still dear friends of mine scooped me up and said, you are going to church. Uh, we realize it's been a while, but this will be good for you because you are no good on your own. And they're correct. I was absolutely no good on my own. And that's when they dropped me at Westside back in February of 2012, so about six years ago. And I've been there ever since. And I, it's been six years. And what I tell you folks week after week, my, I feel like I'm still an infant in, in this church, in this body of Christ. I am still learning right along with the rest of you. I cannot quote scripture after scripture. And I'm still learning what it means to be the person trying to lead others back to Jesus because sometimes that's what that's what we do as you've said and that's what we try and do with this show is I'm trying to help be that under shepherd to get people back to the good shepherd yeah and so you know my my the biggest thing that comes to mind of course was that that Christ followers protected me when I needed it they protected me both physically because I was harming myself yeah. and both mentally because I needed to return to church and to again like I spoke about earlier even after my divorce it was all about me there was no higher power in my life than myself and I was doing things because hey I I don't answer to anyone or anything so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and if I feel like drinking myself into a terrible stupor that's what I'm going to do because I am it I am Almighty Kyle <laughs> yeah, exactly. And looking back on it, I can laugh at myself then. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was the spiritual protection. It was the actual physical protection. Yeah. And it was two people who under shepherd me so that six years later, I'm here trying to under shepherd others. Yeah. Um, maybe you can almost call it returning the favor. Uh, sure. But that's that's where this has really worked out for me. And uh Again, to tr to start trying to summarize, because I know we're way over on time, but there's still people watching. Thank you all very much. There's still people hopping in. There is. Um, it's that. It, it's really that that under shepherd. Um, I think is kind of the term I'm really going to take away from this today. We, as two guys sitting in a man cave in Kansas, we're not going to stop the next tragedy, but we're going to be there when the next tragedy happens. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to do what we can to lead people back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. There will be troubles in this world we are told that we've addressed that on several shows you, know, you can find them all on Facebook if you want to go back and listen to me more I don't know why you'd want to but you can but we know this we are told this we can't act like we didn't expect this it's going to happen troubles are going to come do I hope it's a school shooting no never again I don't ever want to hear this on the news again let's hope we don't maybe this will be the last one there someday will be a last one I hope this is it, but I think what we as the church and as Christ followers need to do is to be that protection for people and to be there to help 
bring them back to Jesus when they want to walk away. Because as we talked about before the show, we really have two choices, right? As Christ followers, lean in or walk away. Walk away. We need to lean in. All of us need to be leaning in. And when we see that person trying to walk away, use your shepherd crook, hook them, pull them in, in, and get them back to where they need to be. And that is what we're called to do. Are we going to do it perfectly? Probably not. But we're going to try. Because you can't ask any more than an honest effort. Try your best. Lead people back to where they need to be. Again, someday, someday we will have the last tragedy. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You know, that's, that's it. Your closing remarks? My closing counselor. remarks are, let's pray. Let's pray. Take so, us out of here. So, Jesus, I just, um, I come before you tonight just, again, with a heavy heart. Um, this is a, this is, this is a scary, this is a scary time. But the, the, the thing that I come for you with also is a heavy heart is just that this gratefulness that we can run to you that we can find strength and comfort and peace in your arms that you will protect us and that you'll constantly walk us through and guide us through the the valleys that we're going to walk through so jesus i my prayer tonight is simple that that everyone gets to feel that in a in a more real way than they ever had before. That they get to feel your protection and your provision and your guidance in a way that just rocks their world in a positive way. And and so Jesus, again, I, just, I say I love you. And I will talk with you again real soon. Amen. Amen. Well, that's going to do it for this week. If you guys have anything you want to talk about next week, please send a message to the show, as I have nothing prepared as of yet. Yep. So you can go ahead and throw in whatever you want, and we'll talk about it. Uh, in two days, happy birthday to my mother. And uh, that's all we happy got. Happy birthday, Grandma Walker. That's right. Two days away on the 22nd. So that's all we've got. I will see you next week. It'll be just me again. I'm sorry. I know I'll lose viewers because you just you bring them in. What? It's that that face. You got a, you got a face for radio. I do. Yeah. Everyone, the problem is there's a video camera at this radio. That that is the unfortunate truth. Yes, it is. Everyone have a great week. I will see you next week. Good night, everyone.